G'day everyone, this is our 105 series Land Cruiser while well, I built back at home with my brother and my dad in a workshop to travel around Australia for a year, been gone for a couple of months now and she's absolutely overperformed, she's done real well she's got lots of goodies on it so make sure you stay tuned to check them all out and if you're new here, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe as it really helps us out let's get stuck into it Right, now we'll start this off with at the front here we've got our AOB Deluxe Bull Bar paired with our side rails just for a bit of extra protection you can never have too much when travelling on the road for our winch, we've got a Rumba 11 XP winch rated to pull 5 tonnes. And for our spotties, I went with the uh, Road Vision 9 inch spotties up the front there. They pump out heaps of light, so you don't really need much more. We've also got the, uh, up the top, we've got our Road Vision 55 inch light bar. It's unnecessary, you don't really need that much light. The spotties at the front do just fine. They've also got the little halo rings in them, so when you get your driving lights on, they absolutely light up and look, they look awesome. And also for our, I've got some uh, steady LED light replacements in the uh, in the headlights there because the original ones that come in the cruiser are just yellow and they're shit. You can't really see much, so I have to get them replaced too. Now for our antennas, we have went with uh, the dual GME uh, 6.6 DBI and the 2.1 DBI, both heavy duties. Alrighty, for this side of the car, I decided to go with our Safari R-Max 4-inch snorkel. Now, if you do any sorts of touring or any hectic four-wheel driving, make sure you get yourself a good snorkel. Would recommend Safari ones. They're really easy to install. I did it myself, did pretty much everything on this car myself, so I'm not a mechanic or anything like that. So it just proves to show you that if you've got some tools and you've got half a brain, you can do it all yourself. Now, for our mirrors, decided to get some clear view towing mirrors. We don't tow anything, but the original mirrors that came on the car are pretty shit. You can't really see too much, so these give you heaps of extra vision. And if you're wondering if you should get yourself a pair, you definitely should be. Alrighty, for the, uh, for the rims and the tyres. We've got here our 33 inch Mickey Thompson Barger ATZ P3s. They're a really good all terrain tyre, would highly recommend them. Had them for about 30,000 Ks now, haven't had a pop or a puncture, had them down to all sorts of types of different PSIs and everything, and they've overperformed, they've done really well. So if you're looking for a good tyre, I would definitely recommend you get yourself a pair of Mickey T's. Right, and for our rims, we've got our Sunraiser 16 inch steel rims. They're only about 80 bucks a pop. Nice and cheap rims, they're a little bit heavier, they're a little bit on the heavy side, but that's all right, because if you bend a rim, you can just bang it out with a hammer and you've got no issues. Also for our suspension setup, which if you ask me, it's one of the most important things for a good touring vehicle. We've got our two inch EFS springs front and rear. For the fronts, we've got plus 100 kilos and for the rear, we've got plus 500 kilos. Now we've also got an EFS steering dampener and we've got 30 millimeter sway bars front and rear. And we've also got pan hard rods front and rear just to make the car a lot more sturdy on the road. If you don't have any of those things, then the car gets very wobbly. It's very hard to control. The second we got all that stuff put onto the car, it made an absolutely huge difference. It was a bit more on the expensive side, but I would highly recommend getting yourself a good suspension setup if you're doing any sorts of touring. Alrighty, onto the rear of the setup. At the back here, we've got our Cruiser Company rear bar with our four and a half kilo gas bottle right next to our 20 litre water jerry can. And on this arm, we've got our spare tire with our crash pad recovery bag. We don't really use it as a recovery bag. We kind of keep all our, we use it as a bin bag. We keep all of our rubbish in there, which that really comes in handy. Keep it on the outside of the car. Now for our roof, we've got our, our awesome as Bush Company AX27 rooftop tent. And we've also got our Nomad by Chaos shower tent here. And with a custom made swivel bracket, which I welded up at the factory. Nice and simple, pop it out. Works fantastic. Now for the tent. Absolutely awesome tent, would recommend it to anyone who's looking for a good tent if you've got the money. It is absolutely awesome. It's one of our favorite parts of the car and I could highly recommend it. We've also got a solar panel hardwired on the roof there, which is fantastic for a little bit of extra power. And we've got our uh, security lights on the side here, wired with a little switch on the inside, just in case uh, if we've got anyone lurking around the car on the outside, can flip the lights on and tell them to bugger off. Right, and now also for our tent, we're gonna be doing that in a separate video because we feel like it deserves its own video. It's such a good investment that I would highly recommend buying yourself one. And if you want to check it out later, we're going to be making a separate video on that. So please come come along and uh, check that out. And um, yeah, you won't be disappointed. Righty, for our awning here, we've got the uh, Bush Company 270 degree XT awning. Fantastic awning, super strong, made out of five mil aluminium. You can pretty much hang off it, it's that strong. Super quick setup time, about, takes about 20 seconds. It's real easy, especially if you're traveling like us, moving all the time, it's super quick packed down, which that's why we got it. So um, yeah, if you're looking for a good high quality awning, definitely uh, invest yourself in a bush company. You, you'll love it.
Alrighty, it's time for the part you've all been waiting for to rear the setup. Now, everything you see behind me looks a little bit different to your average Land Cruiser. That's because me and my brother back at home, we custom designed this draw system uh, just from an idea I had. So um, everything you see here is uh, 3mm aluminium. And luckily enough, I grew up in a family where I had all the tools available to do this kind of things. Now, we don't build draw systems or anything like that, but we did have a brake press, we had a router, we had a mill, we had all those different types of machines and stuff to do this type of stuff. So um, it all started out with a uh, tape measure, lots of swearing and uh, lots of arguments, but uh, we eventually got an idea and uh, drew it up on a computer, uh, sent it all to the router, cut it all out, and then we uh, went to the brake press, folded it all, bent it all up, put it together, took it all apart again, spray painted it, put it back together again, chucked it in the car, and then the, this is the final product is what you see behind me. So it came out really nicely, and if you're in the middle of making a draw system yourself, hopefully this will give you a couple ideas what to do. And um, yeah, let's get stuck into it. Alrighty, we'll start this off here. Underneath this first drawer here, we've got a little push out food grade um, chopping board here, which is really good for your chicken, your meats, anything like that, so bacteria doesn't grow on it. And then in this drawer, this is where we keep all of our pots, pans, cooking utensils. We've got a niche board, toaster, sifters, plates, bowls, kitchen equipment, cleaning, anything that's related to do with the kitchen lives in here, so everything's nice and organized. And then this top drawer here, this is where we keep all of our tools, all of our camp ovens, speakers, hammocks, lights, chainsaws, uh, hoses, mozzie stuff, anything to do with tools or anything like that. That's where all this stuff lives. For our fridge, I decided to go with the 85 litre Bushman's upright fridge. I used to have chest fridges all the time, but um, yeah, I just got sick of digging out of the bottom to get whatever I want. Everything's so un unorganized and pretty much need to take everything out of the fridge to get something down the bottom. So if you're thinking you should convert to an upright fridge, you body well should, but no issues with this awesome fridge. They use about four amps compared to about a chest fridge, which is about two to three. So it's a little bit more, but I mean, for the extra space you get, you get a seven liter freezer, you get a little produce drawer, everything's nice and all organized. And now if you don't like produce, you can take that whole bottom thing out and you can fit a slab of 24 cans straight in there. So it's uh, good for going away with the boys. <laughs> Alrighty, now onto the best part of the drawer system. This is our uh, slide out kitchen. So you've got everything here for your cooking. You've got your big pantry here for big enough to hold about two weeks worth of food. Uh, you, at the front here, you got a little cutlery drawer for your spatulas, your tongs, knives and forks, stuff like that. Up top, you've just got a little wooden choppy board just for chopping anything else that's not meat. That's what we got the other one for. And this side, we've got our single burner gas stove. This one burns the hottest out of our gas stove, so we use this for all of our meats and stuff like that. And down here, we've got another slide out, two burner domestic gas stove. So if that works really well. When we're doing big meals, we normally have all three of these going and it just, yeah, works perfectly, nice and simple. And on the other side of the drawer system, we've got our slide out um, drop down sink. So that's really good. You can pretty much, you can cook, you can clean, pack up, do everything within a, within a couple of minutes. So yeah, it works out really well and everything's nice and compact. Now also underneath this the chopping board here, we've got our little gas system. So all these gas systems, they're all plumbed up to this one hose. And that's why we've got the rear bar the way it is. So I can just connect that straight on and she's ready to go within a couple of seconds. So yeah, it's really nice and simple. So. If you're in the middle of building yourself a draw system, would recommend doing something similar to this because, yeah, it works really well and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's come in handy so many times. So, yeah, would recommend it. Alrighty, onto our 12 volt system. We've got 270 amp hours of lithium batteries and paired with our Cymarine Pico battery monitoring system. This is a fantastic battery monitoring system. It's a bit more on the pricey side, but I say it's worth it for what, for what you get. It shows you your battery percentage, the time, the date, how many minutes till your battery's full, how many minutes till it's flat, how many amps it's using, how many amps are going in, how many amps are going out. It's got graphs, it's got fridge temps, it's got uh, water tank sensors. It, pretty much you can have so many things on this little device that uh, yeah, I'd say it's definitely worth it. And if you're looking for a good one, I would recommend investing in one of these. Now also we've got four switches here. Our first one's got our, gonna be our lights for our awning and our surrounding lights. Uh, our second one's our shower pump for our water out the side and our water out the back here. Our third one's our heater pump, which is around the side, and we'll get that, get to that a little bit later for our hot water showers. And our fourth one is our air compressor around the back here too. Next to that, we've got a little, we've got a little voltmeter with a double USB power point there, so that's really good for charging GoPros, charging phones, whatever you need. And we've also got a 2,000 watt and a drive inverter with a two 240 volt outlets, so that's really good. Now we have a 240 volt kettle 
a toaster, a Nutribullet, an air fryer, and that's that's enough power to run it all. So you don't really need too much more than that unless you're going to be running a, a microwave or a induction cooktop. You might need to be a bit bigger of an inverter. So yeah, that's pretty much it for our 12 volt system. Let's go check something else out. Alrighty, under the inside of the car. We've got our Toyota Land Cruiser factory seats, but we've got them reupholstered. They're absolutely awesome like this. The uh, original ones are getting a little bit shit and all the uh, cushioning was starting to go. So, um, and also we've got the uh, floor redone and the floor came up really nice. The old carpet was uh, getting a little bit smelly. So we've got that redone too. Now on the inside, we've also got a UHF little handheld unit there right next to your leg. So it's not fucking on your arm or anything like that. This is the most comfortable spot that I found to put it. Alrighty. On the inside for a head unit, we've got a nine inch heads up display from a place called Premium Head Units. It's a plug and play kit, kit. literally plug straight in. You can get uh, dash cams, you can get reverse cameras, get whatever you want, there's heaps of extras, but we just got the head unit itself, so that's really good. Now, for our audio system, we've got uh, two six and a half inch Hertz energy speakers up front. We've got a 12 inch subwoofer here, and we've also got two amplifiers at the back, which you can't really see, but it's all wired up nicely, and it's all nice and neat, and it pumps real hard, so. We love having a car with some good tunes. So yeah, it came up really well. And uh, I'm really impressed with uh, the inside of the cab. It looks real nice and looks like a brand new car, even though she's 20 years old, so. All right, let's check out the engine bay. She's a 1FZ FE engine. She's a FZJ 105R 2002 petrol Land Cruiser. We haven't done too much special underneath the bonnet. Only thing we've done is a 120 amp hour AGM deep cycle um, battery. And we've got a Red Arc Smart Start Isolator, which is pretty much a must have with uh, any sorts of touring vehicle or anything like that. We've got all of our fuses and everything in here. And um, yeah, we've uh, done new extractors. We've uh, put all new pipes in. We've done a new radiator. We've done new thermostats. We've done new alternators. We've done pretty much anything there is, you know, power steering pumps, etc. Um, just before we uh, left for our big trip, we uh, thought we'd better go over all of it and make sure she's uh, rock solid so I don't break anything on the road. But haven't had any problems with her yet. Fantastic engine, and um, she just likes to drink fuel as all. But uh, all these old cars kind of do, eh? <laughs> Rightio. Eh? Alrighty, onto this side of the car. We've got a porta potty, we've got an air fryer, we've also got an awning wall kit in here, which we'll be showcasing in a later video when we do our tent. We've got our two little toiletry bags and we've got all of our toilet cleaning stuff there too. Now if you notice these two little taps down here, we've got an in and an out. So underneath this uh, porta potty here, we've got an 80 litre stainless steel water tank, which we can uh, plug a hose in here through a bucket, turn the pump on and it'll suck up all the water through the tank. And then the water will start coming out the back when you know it's full. And the other side, this is our out. So we plug our shower head into here and we just open up our, our um, shower awning and then we're ready for showers. Now, if you want hot showers, we do have heater pumps in here, which is a little, uh, there's a little thermostat underneath here in this little nook. And we normally have that to about 40 degrees. Now, when you've turned the heater pump on and you've opened up all the valves down the side here, the water will all get sucked out of the, out of the tank, go through the front of the car, go through a heated coil, and then return into the tank. Once it's reached desired temperature, the heater pump will switch off and then you're ready for nice 40 degree showers, which is an absolutely awesome thing to have on the road because when you've been traveling all the time and you're able to have a nice warm shower, that just helps so much. And um, yeah, I would recommend getting a hot water system in your car if you're doing any sorts of touring. Hot showers on the road are the best. All right, let's go to the other side of the car. All right, on this side of the car, we've, this is where we keep all of our clothes and our shoes. We've got a little shoe rack down the bottom there, and we've also got all of our uh, clothes in these tread bags. We've got two large bags and two small bags each, which is enough to uh, pretty much have enough clothes for the whole year, enough undies and stuff like that. So. We feel like that's plenty of storage, don't really need much else. And just at the top here, this is where we keep all of our chairs and our tables and stuff. And we've got an extra solar bank in there for a little bit more power and stuff like that. So this side doesn't really have too much, just, just more storage. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this side. Rightio, that pretty much concludes this rig rundown. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions about the build, please leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you on that. Uh, I'll be posting a bunch of photos of the build process on our Instagram, which I'll leave a link down below. And if you've, uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.